Excuse me, because my Hungarian is terrible, so I'm going to speak mostly only in English. <laughs> Maybe even my English is not so good sometimes. All right, so I'm Saul Robbins. Obviously, you know a little bit about me. And, um, I'm an artist and teacher, and photographer in New York City, curator sometimes, a little bit of writing, and everything else. I juggle many balls on one foot with wheels, which is the life of the artist, I think. We're always trying to figure out how to make everything happen in a way that does not make us crazy and keeps us moving in a direction with a, a plan, a goal, a dream, whatever we want to call this, with some perspective on what we want now to turn into later. So, oh, yeah. So two things I think are really important to consider about our careers. The first one, I love this. This man, Clifford Owens, is an artist in the United States. And if we think about the fact that what we do every day is actually related to failure, because how many times do we send an email to somebody, or make a phone call maybe, or give somebody something, and nothing happens? That we can call failure. Or we can also call it practicing, because the next time we send them something, maybe they respond. It's a, and we have to do this all the time and not take it personally. Because if we take it personally, it's going to destroy us. And then we cannot be creative, we cannot have a, a positive sense of self-esteem, and we cannot keep pushing forward. So now I'm here today speaking to you, right? I'm this VIP visiting artist from New York. I gave a lecture last year. I'm giving one now. We're leading a workshop. I was reviewing portfolios. Five years ago, I had no idea I would ever be in Budapest. I heard of the city. I heard of the country, right? But I never thought that something would happen. It's like a map. Many points, eventually you suddenly see that something happens. So you have to have this perspective. It's really, really important. Does that make sense to people? Okay, good. And I know that um, sometimes it's difficult. It brings up a lot of psychology maybe, but we have to remind ourselves that the work we're making is strong and what we're doing has a meaning and has a value, a purpose, and that we're actually trying to make the world a different place. Maybe more beautiful, maybe more thoughtful, maybe more stupid and silly and crazy, but always trying to make for good things to happen. So this is my philosophy. I hope you will join me, so to speak, in uh, making this happen. Um, and the, really, the most important thing I say to all my students is just keep working, keep taking pictures, keep thinking, keep being very, very critical, because we have to be critical. We can't say, oh, that's good. We have to say, what else can I do? Okay. So we're going to talk today a lot. It's going to be much more lecture style. I'm going to ask you questions, but later this afternoon we're going to um, interact much more uh, when we go to the school. BKF? BKF. Um, but right now it's going to be a lot of information, and um, so please take notes. That's really important always. Okay. So the first question I'm going to ask you, and I'm serious, I want to hear from you, is why do we market ourselves? Why are you here? Why do we do this? Why do I teach this? And why do I want to help you? So I want answers. Please, anything. To get recognition. To get recognition. Excellent. What else? Money for a living. That would be very nice. <laughs> uh, we make but really, we should have these, right, and these. They're a little bit stronger. Reach more people. To meet people. Reach. Reach. OK. Why is reaching people valuable? If you want to communicate, OK, to communicate. OK. <coughs> and why is the money so important? You have money, you can 
can have food. Yeah, you can pay the bills. You can pay the bills. You can have food, and you can do more works. Okay. <laughs> right. I like nice, comfortable shoes. I have a hat. It keeps me warm in winter. I want film for my camera, digits for my stupid computer, right? But yeah, I also want to make more work. What else? That's it. What reach else? our dream. Sorry. Reach our dream. To reach your dream. Excellent. And I'm going to put an S because yeah. it's not just our dreams, but I have more than one dream. They have a saying, you know, we just had this election in the United States. They have a saying, because they asked me who I might vote for, and I say, my needs are not even on the ballot. I have a lot of dreams. Okay. What else? Any other ideas? To get if, new things. To get uh, new things. To get new things? Yeah. Like what? Like uh, another <coughs> work. Uh, something that you never thought before. Say that again? That you never thought before. Okay. Just like Budapest for you. Right. Okay. If no one knows here, you will you be here. So maybe to reach new places? Yeah, okay. places and new ideas. Ah, here. I will write. <coughs> maybe something like that? Good. All right. So, oh. yeah. So, do we take, this is, now I give you some answers, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. You see, we're going to have a good time for three days. So first, you need to take control of your career because you need to be realistic about your goals. Nobody's going to do it for you. I can help by teaching. Maybe if I see some work and I know a curator or a magazine or something, but if you don't approach somebody like me or curators, you know, whatever, nobody else is going to do this for you. We have to be realistic, of course, because telephones don't ring or emails don't happen on the automatically. We will go blind staring at our telephone or our whatever devices. You market yourself so you can meet key decision makers. This is about reaching people, communicating. And the report, how many of you came to the reviews last weekend? OK, good. How many of you knew about it but did not come? OK. So the only way to meet people is to go to these things. And actually, here, how much was it? How many foreign was it to come to this review? 6,000? Okay. Is that a lot of money? Sorry? It's not that much. I, no, I went to a restaurant. I could spend 6,000 on dinner. I wore a pair of socks. Now, I'm not trying to criticize those of you who didn't come. Not at all. Because there's a lot going on in our lives. So it could be money, it could be obligations, time, etc. But um, it's very, very cheap. And the advantage that you have here in Budapest is that the price for you to come to this is almost nothing. While if you go to Bratislava, it's still not so expensive. It's two hours away, but it's maybe 100 euros. I'm not exactly sure. I can't recall. But for me to go to one of these things in the United States, guess how much it costs for four days? Sorry? 600? That's a nice, I like that number. Yes? <laughs> what do you say? I said 400. 400. Put the two together, it's about $1,000 for four days. That's not including airplane, hotel, food, whatever. And then you have the cost of preparing everything to make your prints, to good, give it a nice portfolio, to print out all your paperwork, your everything, etc., 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 these kinds of things, whatever. <laughs> So <coughs> next year, I want to see all of you at a portfolio review for 6,000 to 100,000 forums because it's really worth it. Right? You can go to the one in Bratislava and the one here, and you can meet 12, 15 people. It's an incredibly good deal. OK. And the decision makers are the gallerists, the curators, the 
collectors sometimes, I've seen people say, oh, that's great, how much? And I know that sometimes happens here also. Maybe not in Budapest, but definitely Bratislava, because I know people who've come and bought. Also, you meet your peers. Do people know this word, peer? Which is what this is all about. Because you are a network of people. Whether you like each other or hate each other, you also have introductions to each other. You, ideally, you should know each other's work. And you never know what can happen. Because when I went to my first review about 10 years ago, I met people. And eventually, I curated three or four people I met into an exhibition in New York City. Pretty nice, right? And that's just from sitting and talking. Bullshitting, we say in English, having a good time, maybe a beer, maybe coffee, whatever, and saying, oh, what are you doing? Wow, that's pretty cool. And then you put it in your head, and then eventually something could happen. So this one, your peers, is really, really important. And we're going to do something this afternoon, which is going to help you to introduce each other to your work, and then also tomorrow, even more so, more intensely. Because I believe most strongly that you are the artist of today, and you are the decision makers of tomorrow. I believe that 100%. Because who knows when you're going to become a curator, or open a gallery, or marry somebody with wealth, or suddenly invent an app for the <laughs> eyes, whatever, and make a ton of money, and then you say, I love photography. I want one of him, I want one of her, I want him, one of this, one of that. You know, I'm really serious, you never know. Okay. And success beats failure. I prefer to be important. Not because my ego, but because I have a lot of ideas, just like you. I have a lot of things I want to say about the way we look at the world, about the way we interact, about things on many different levels. And I would rather have the opportunity to do this than to sit in a corner and just read a book for the rest of my life. Although that would be nice too, because I don't read much when I'm working. But I think you understand. Okay, so targeting your audience. How do you decide to do this? Again, questions, answers. What are some possible ways to do this? Exhibitions. Exhibitions. What else? Sorry? Social networks. Social network. Websites. Sorry? Websites. What else? But maybe first of all to get some information about that kind of audience and Okay, excellent. That's really actually more specific to what I'm thinking. Say it once more so they can hear you. <clears throat> maybe at the beginning to get some information about that what kind of audience we are yeah. talking so let's about. Say, to know your audience. If I'm a photojournalist, I'm not going to want to send my pictures to a place that only shows nudes or landscapes or conceptual work or something like this, and vice versa. And there's plenty of people who will come to um, either to me or to a gallery and they'll say, or by email, and they'll say, ah, here's some work, I'd love to show it to you. And they say, great, what do you do? And then they say, oh, I photograph children. And the guy says, or the woman says, have you looked at my website? Do you know my gallery? And they say, not so much. He says, I don't have any children on my, in my exhibition, or in my artist. So it can be really embarrassing, obviously, and difficult, uh, because it's a waste of your time and materials and all this. Okay. What else? Getting to know the market, so. Okay, good. What do you mean by that? <coughs> to know the concurrencies or to know what people are looking for. Or what's okay. Whatever, what's trendy. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe we even can say to know what's hot or popular and what's not. So in the United States right now, conceptual is really popular. Young is very popular. Um, colorful, a little bit crazy. A zine kind of atmosphere, things like this. This is very popular. While maybe black and white landscapes are not so popular. There's a place you can have a black and white landscape exhibition, but you might have to look more for this. And it may not be in New York City, unless you're really important. Okay, great. So, also, know your work and know yourself. To target an audience means you have to know also about you. So I will talk about this a lot and constantly, because I personally believe you need to be honest, and you need to know who you are before you can really clearly communicate to other people what you do in a way that will be genuine, authentic, and effective. Because if you don't really believe in yourself and what you're doing, they may not really want to exhibit what you're doing. Okay. Research potential venues and websites, or artists, excuse me, so again, to know your audience and to know the market. Get an idea of who does this guy or who does this woman want to exhibit. So let's say Fowler Sophia, you know her gallery. It's really very, very nice. She's only working with Hungarian artists. It's not very good for me. It's really possibly good for you. But if you wanted to find an exhibition in Bratislava, let's just say for example, which is very close, you need to make sure that they want to look at artists from other countries. Things like this. Visit websites and look at galleries a lot. Go to these places, get to know them. How many people know there's openings tonight? There's Ballenthaus, has Hermann Ildi, and X6 has an exhibition. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the that. Was Thank you. There's two openings. I invite you to come with me and hang out, have a glass of wine, schmooze, we call it, rub elbows. And I'm serious, this is, in New York, this is an assignment. I take my students out on a night where there's galleries and all we do is run around, we hand out business cards or, or we just talk to people and it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of energy. You're constantly working. But this is a job and that's part of your job. Be nice, be courteous, be professional, be respectful. This is part of targeting your audience because this is part of building a type of personality that you express when you're working. And working, I don't mean taking pictures, I mean all this other stuff. You get out, you meet people, you have fun. Because we may as well, look, we're gonna be poor, right? We may not have any recognition, but if we can drink a glass of wine, maybe get some cheese or some crackers, or maybe there's more if it's a nice gallery, right? Then it's a little more interesting and it doesn't cost much. I know it sounds silly, but we may as well have a good time doing this because if we're going to only feel like it's a struggle and it's depressing, then it's not going to help us make, most likely make good work. I'm not saying I want to see happy pictures, not at all, because the world has a lot of pain and individual people have a lot of pain too. But I really want to see people enjoying expressing themselves and striving to make their lives more rich and more full and more satisfying. And don't rush. All right. I am 51 years old. I have never had a major exhibition in a gallery in New York City, but I'm keeping to try to make this happen. So I'm much older than many of you. So take your time. I work very slowly. Sometimes I maybe make one picture a month, one roll of film a month. I hardly ever use this digital, stupid digital thing, except for when I travel. So I'm not making many pictures for my art, but I'm just taking my time. A lot of ideas are happening, and then later maybe something happens. So I had a professor who was always telling me, you're too impatient, too impatient, slow down. He, of course, was very famous internationally. Roy de Carava, very important artist, but he could say this, but still is. You have to take your time, and you want to make the perfect fit. You want to be the right person at the right time for the right gallery. So you go, let's say, to XYZ Gallery, and, and you have pictures of pineapples.
but you're also working on pictures of bananas. And they say, well, I really like those banana pictures. In about six months, we're going to make a banana exhibition, and I want you to be in it. It sounds stupid, right? But, you know, whatever. You can replace bananas with naked men jumping into the Danube River from the chain bridge. Okay. okay. Read blogs, read magazines, read newspapers, and read a lot of fiction. Do things that inspire you. Don't just be serious. Like, don't just read this. Don't just read this. These are really important. But also, I don't have a book with me, but read something that completely inspires you. That separates your mind from all the work and makes you think <coughs> about beauty, peace, uh, like peace of mind. Uh, can make you think about cooking. Go to the movies. I should write that down. One moment. Go to the movies. Movies are really great inspiration, and it's visual. It's, you know, 90 minutes or more of, can be really, really inspiring experience. Okay, so, some of the things that we need to do. Any questions? So far, okay. We will talk more about these things later, like social network, websites, etc. So, Personalize your materials. Be consistent with your materials. And materials, I'm going to show you a lot of examples in a while. But business cards, mailers. This is a mailer. Some of you got this already. I've been handing them out to everybody. You should too. I'm serious. Because it's, she laughs because I gave her six of them. I'm going to do my mistake. Um, but you need to have something with your name, and your website, and your email, and a telephone can be important too. You have to have something. Your stationery, your envelopes, your mailing labels, whatever you're using, this is part of being consistent. It should all have a nice look. Your website, your email. It doesn't mean you have to use exactly the same font when you write as when it's on your website, but you want things to have a quality of look so that people see that you're professional. Now if what you do is you make things that are sort of irreverent and look very um, messy in general, you would want to make your materials look a little messy. Maybe you have some rips on your card, but you do it in a way that looks really beautiful so people don't think, what the heck is this, and throw it out. But they say, wow, this person's really thinking about everything for marketing. Sorry, it has two screens on this. I see one is what is up there and one is next, so it makes me confused. This also means your CDs. If you have CDs, your leave-behinds, which are what you leave behind when you meet with people, and other media. Nowadays, you know, I brought a few CDs to show, but like, these are almost antiques now. So they can be very, they're very, they can be very valuable, but hardly anybody I know uses these anymore. Now they have flash drives or Dropbox or you know little stick these sticks as you call them things like that. Think about direct mail sending something in a postcard. So it, this has too much information to make a real direct mail because it wasn't intended for that. But you could just stamp, 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 and send out thousands or hundreds or tens, depending on what you want to do. Thank you cards, very, very important. To thank the people that you meet with for their time, for their interest, for their um, response, for their critique. This is extremely important. You have to follow up with them. And email and e-marketing, I call it, we'll talk a little bit about that later. It's really, really important. So I met a lot of people I'm not going to name names, <laughs> but I haven't really received a lot of emails yet from people. Now, it may take a while. Some people, I know people in New York, they take months to do this, but it's really important to follow up. Don't just say, here's my card, and I look forward to hearing from you, because while I literally, I will take every card I get from people, and I will enter your information. 
because you are also a resource for me. If I say, oh, I really like her work, she's making pictures of pineapples, <coughs> now I'm looking for bananas, she might know a banana photographer. Maybe she's doing that. So that's really good information for me. Or maybe I'm making now bana banana and pineapple pictures. And I want to say, hey, what are you doing? I want to show you what I'm doing. You never know. But, so I collect all this information. I take it very seriously. But my colleagues, they're really busy. So if they see something that they love, they're going to keep it in their head. But they want to know from you that you care enough to follow up and to send an email to do something, to let them know, thank you very much. This was a great meeting. I look forward to being in touch. Blah, 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 whatever you're going to say. And be consistent. Again, I said that before, but I'm going to say it again. Because you have to make it look nice. People want that. It's going to make it, and, and to make it easy, to be honest. So, what else? <clears throat> so this gets a little more personal. Make work that is relevant, not redundant. So personally, I don't ever need to see another black and white landscape. I don't ever need to see another nude. I don't ever need to see another still life. I almost don't need to see anything anymore. I want to see something that's new, that's exciting, that's fresh, that gives a different perspective. You have a very interesting history here in Hungary, and, if, and both in the past and in the present. If you're going to make a landscape, let's say, I want to see something that relates to it in a way that's different, exciting, makes a strong commentary. Build a network of inspiration and support. That's why we're here. You're not just here to get information and then thank you very much and leave. You're here to talk to each other, to talk to me, to be inspired. Same as reading a book, eating a nice meal, having a glass of wine, or taking a walk, going to the bathhouse, whatever makes you, you know, feel excited about life. And to support each other. So you say, ah, oh, shit, I had a terrible day. I talked to this person. He was so mean to me. You need to talk to somebody. Don't just hold it inside. You need to talk to someone who believes in you and says, don't worry, he was terrible or she was terrible to me also. That's just the, who that person is. Don't take it so personally that you don't get other people to help you to lift back up. Also, what else? Volunteer, make friends. So how many of you were involved in some way besides the reviews with Photoporta? Okay, so you were doing something? Yeah, I did the art masters. Okay. And I'm doing Indonesia volunteer. Excellent. Because when you volunteer, how many new people did you meet from doing this? Almost everyone was new. And did you exchange? Excellent. So, volunteering is a really great thing to do if you have the time and the interest. Don't volunteer for something you don't want to volunteer for. Think about what could be valuable for you. I do a lot of volunteer work with an organization in New York called the Camera Club of New York. We'll all hear from them eventually because I'm going to have all the emails and give them to my friends. But I was on the board of directors. I help them to raise money, and also we have a residency program for three months. We have one photographer every three months. We give them film, we give them paper, we give them darkroom access, scanner access, studio access, and we have a grant from a New York State Council on the Arts, it's called, NISCA. We get, they get $1,000 per month. They get $3,000. That is not from our money. We give it to the artists. For me, it gives me an incredible sense of privilege an honor to be able to give this to people. And I meet a ton of people, because I'm also the guy who makes the order for the film and the paper, so everybody's very friendly to me. And um, that's it. You have to use everything for yourself, but you also, I think, you have to be giving and spreading. We say in, in English, spread the wealth. It means give it out. So I don't do this to be selfish. I don't do it because I get a few rolls of film or something. I do it because I love to see young artists getting support. It's so difficult. After you're finished with school, what are you going to do? Can you find a job? <coughs> can you keep making work? Where can you do this? In New York, it costs 10 to $20 an hour to rent a dark room. 
So we have an arrangement, $200 a month, or $2,000 a year. It's very cheap if you work many hours. So we give this to people for free for three months. And sometimes we do other things with uh, what we call small project grant. Somebody comes for three weeks or a month or something like this. Um, I've also hosted some people coming over from, um, actually from Budapest, where I wrote a letter and they were able to use this in their documentation with the government to get a grant. And then I could get that person some film. So making friends, being involved, you can do many different things. Last year when I came here, there was not so much money, so it cost me some money also, so I'm giving. It's okay, it's an investment in meeting people, making connections, it's fantastic. And you will watch these people you meet and you follow up with them, you never know what can happen. And there was a lot going on at the art market. How many people went to the art market? Good. Join a critique group, we call it in English, to meet people. I just need a sip of water. Because it's really important to get commentary about your work. So I went to graduate school in New York at Hunter College. Afterwards, there's nothing. There's no teachers, there's no studio visits, <clears throat> there's nothing. So then I met many people and we meet once a month and everybody gets, you know, once a month we have two people, two hours, one hour per person. I get into arguments, I get compliments, I get a lot of suggestions, I get good, 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 strong critique. Somebody says, don't do that, do this, or that's great, whatever. It's really important. And this is actually, one more thought. It's really important to let yourself be vulnerable, to be open in mind and sort of heart, let's say, to listen to other people's commentary. Because if everybody you show your pineapple picture set to says, you know, they're interesting, but I'd really rather see fruit salad. Or let's say, <clears throat> this is a real big critique of mine, everybody, if, what if you put everything in the middle of your pictures? And there's never anything on the right or the left. It's always in the middle. I'm going to tell you immediately what's with the middle. That's the most dead place to put almost anything unless you're doing editorial, reportage, or very mainstream practice. So you want to hear this from people. It may hurt you a little bit because you may say, oh, I worked so hard and now they don't like me. But you laugh, but I'm serious. It can be, this is. How many of you have children? Anybody? Okay. These are our children. This is something we care so much about. It's a passion and a love and something we nurture to move along to make something happen. So if somebody said to, your, to you, your kid is really cute, but what a stupid haircut, or he doesn't know how to speak or something, <laughs> you're going to hit them, right? You're going to be so crazy. But if they say, Oh, your kid, the haircut's really nice, but it looks a little funny. What happened? There's ways to say things. And then you can say, oh, maybe next time I go to a different barber. I don't know. But <coughs> the point is that we need to be thoughtful when we hear these comments. We need to be thoughtful about giving them for sure, but we really need to be open to them because they're incredibly valuable. How many of you are in school right now studying? So I hope your teachers sometimes say, what's going on? Why are you doing this? Have you thought about that? Have you looked at this person's work? <coughs> Maybe you could move this. Maybe you could do that. Do this again. Shoot that again. Things like this. Right? Is this valuable, this kind of commentary for you people in school? You can't just always say, good work, good work, good work. Then there's no growth. So practice, practice, practice. We have a saying in uh, English in New York, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Or how do you get to the Opera House? You have to practice. They're not just going to say, hey, you with the violin over there, come on in. But don't be a bystander. You know this word, a bystander? Somebody just watches. Be involved. Do things. Think, talk, take uh, risks and have fun.
If you can't have fun, <coughs> you have to. Okay. So, follow up. So let's say you have your meetings, right? Don't be forgettable. We we'll talked about this a little bit already. Don't be the person they. Hmm, what was this person? What did they do? I can't even remember. Make something unique. And you must follow up. You will be forgettable if you don't. I'm not saying this because I want those of you who I met to send me an email. Believe me, I get enough email problems. It's so much sometimes. I'm not interested in the attention. I want it because I want you to know how to work. You have to do these things. And let it be fun. I will show you some examples later of emails. You must socialize. You can make work that's very internal in your home, let's say, about depression or about your children or your parents or your husband, your wife, yourself, whatever. But you have to go out and meet people. You have to make connections. You cannot just do this in a vacuum. We say that. Hand out cards and mailers. You know, don't just go out like me. I'm being a little bit uh, obnoxious, maybe, New York style. Hey, how are you? Right? But you have to find a way that works to let people know who you are. And collect these cards, too. <laughs> Some, I forget a lot, believe me, since I was a child. So I know it's not Alzheimer's, it's just me, Slow Robbins. Okay, so hand out things. Offer people leave behinds and promo packets. And we'll talk more about that and I'll give you examples of that later. <laughs> give people the possibility of a CD, a zip drive. Now they're making these really cheap little sticks. I know somebody bought them for maybe $5, 10,000 forints, and he puts everything on it and here, thanks for meeting me, here it is, everything, boom. Um, Dropbox folders. Sometimes people actually will follow through, or it's, a, it's now a very simple way to send a lot of stuff you know, to somebody, and even to know if they, if they take it. Consider making a zine as a lead behind. What does it mean? A zine is a, it's short for magazine. It comes from a sort of post, a punk rock anarchist kind of um, practice in the seven, 1970s, starting in England, of being very irreverent and harsh and just sort of not giving a shit about anything and um, pictures and it was originally words, very much an anarchist type of thing, a way to disseminate information and ideas and nowadays it's a lot of things with photographs. So it doesn't have to be so harsh politically, but it's about a sort of do-it-yourself um, and very open, just sort of crazy style sometimes. But you can make a very beautiful magazine too. You know, maybe just something that presents your work in a way that's not so sort of crazy. It has a very youthful quality to it also. And um, you don't have to make a zine with 50 pictures. You can make one that's just six or eight pages long on newsprint. So it could be, you know, on this kind of paper. It could just be this big. It could even be half that size. It doesn't have to be huge, with pictures and you know, then on the backs is your name and information. And then you meet somebody and you hand it to them. And it also is showing people that you're thinking about what you're doing beyond just making pictures. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> look what's on there. What do you know? <laughs> okay. Promo packages. What do you think? should be in a promotional packet. Do people know this idea of promo packet? Is it a new? Yes, no? Do people know what this is? Okay, great. So what should be inside it? Business card. Card. I would say business card. What else? Flyers. Flyer. When you say flyer, Anna, you're talking about how big? Like a postcard. Like a postcard, okay. So let's say postcard. In English, a flyer is something that's much bigger like this. 
while a card is something like this. Just for our vocabulary, to make sure we're... Okay, so what else? Catalogs. Sorry? Catalogs. A catalog would be awesome. Now, a catalog can function like a zine. Let's say you have an exhibition, and they say we're going to print 2,000 of them. Do you want that? And you think, 2,000, that's so much. Say yes. Because I had an exhibition just a month ago in New York. It was a solo exhibition. I got 2,000 of these. Well, I only gave out about 1,200 in New York. So I have a ton of these left. <laughs> hello, Budapest. Hello, Berlin. Hello, Paris. Hello, other places, wherever I go on this trip. It becomes a very convenient thing to do. Now, catalog is even nicer because it's like a zine. Because, and also, this I made myself. I could make this and not have an exhibition. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. But when you have a little catalog or a zine, you immediately have a stamp of authority and validity and importance because somebody helped you make this. There's maybe an essay, there's pictures, who knows what is in there. Hopefully your CV is on the back. This is great. What else? What else? There's a lot more. Please. CDs. CD? Sure, you could have a CD. What else? Magnets or badges. Or okay, so let's say cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Magnets, badges, um, stickers. Somebody gave me this. It's a little sticker. I'm surprised I didn't see it in the bathroom at my mom, you know? <coughs> but, um, no, uh, no one guy he's put stickers all over in New York City. What else? What about your pictures? Besides the CD, are you going to give them some samples of your pictures? Postcard. We talked about postcard already. So do you know what thumbnail means? Yeah? Okay. So you could have <coughs> thumbnail and just thumbnails um, on a piece of paper, just like this. So personally, what I do is I have different um, bodies of work, different series, and I have a handout that has usually 12 pictures on it with the name and my contact information. Immediately, you can see there's 12 examples from this. And I could put four or five of these into a package. What else? What's the work about? What are you saying? How about, okay, as we'll start. So, statement. <coughs> Do you just give people your pictures? Say, nice to meet you, these are my pineapples. Mm -hmm. I like fruit. Or do you say, I'm photographing pineapple because I spent a year in Costa Rica and I'm very interested in the relationship between people and fruit production and capitalism and exploitation and blah, 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 blah. Or I really like to eat pineapple because it makes me very healthy and then I take a bath at Rudash once a month and I feel fantastic. Whatever, it doesn't matter why you do it. But you, it's really, really important to have this. The same with your CV and your bio. One reason is it tells people you are thinking. You know they want to know something. You know they want to remember something by looking at it later. So, also a personalized cover letter. It could be, if this is if you're sending something afterwards. When I go to reviews, I might hand out something to somebody and say, nice to meet you. Would you like this? Because immediately it's, they get it, it's done, it makes a nice impression. But if they say, oh, please send it to me, or hmm, can you tell me about this, you know, send me something in six weeks when you're finished, or two months, or six weeks, I mean, you know, six months, whatever, then you put a cover letter in there and make it very nice. Example images. Some way, besides a postcard, to show your images. 
statement or statements. If you're making more than one series, <coughs> you should have a statement for every single series. I have on my website, immediately, six different projects and references to other projects. Every single one of them has a statement. So is Syrian bio the same? No, great, great question. The CV, does anybody know the difference between CV and bio? Yes? Bio is narrative. Bio is narrative. So you can tell things that many of your students say when you were created. Right. And it's usually, at least in the United States, it's usually written in the third person. So I don't say I, I say Saul Robbins does this, he this, he that. And um, the CV is your you know, curriculum vitae. Business and promo cards, we talked about that already. Also this is really important. Don't just send me pineapples or bananas. I want to know there's a title to the series. If the pineapples is titled Dole, which is a big pineapple producer, it's going to be very different from fruit salad. Because immediately the title tells you something about the work. An image list, if people want it, you know what this is? If people know what an image list is? Yes, no? How many people know what it is? Okay. An image list is a list of your images. So if you send me 20 pictures, I want to know, on, or sometimes I want to know, or if you make a, if you send a submission to somebody, and we'll talk about this more, they ask you to send an image list. What is picture one? What is picture two? What is picture three? And they ask usually title, uh, medium, size, year, maybe something else. It depends. We'll talk about this when I show samples. If you have it, reviews, press clippings, interviews, etc. All this stuff. Throw it in there. So I don't have a picture of a packet with me. But I have had a lot of success with one series of pictures, these chairs. Beep, 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 right? It was in the New York Times. It was in More Magazine twice, Canada and US. It's um, been written about from exhibitions and catalogs. and There's a bunch of stuff for this. And it's about to be published in uh, La Repubblica out of Milano. Just just happened because I came to Budapest. The beauty of Budapest extended to Milano, and somebody recognized me. I'm making a joke, but you never know when something can happen. But I can put this also in my package or on my website. Also, this but we're not going to talk about it so much. Editions and prices. Do you talk much about this with your students? Not yet. Not yet. Will you? And how do you decide when? At, at what year of their study do you bring this? Third. Third, okay. So when you start to, do people understand additioning? It's, I personally think it's a really ridiculous idea for a reproducible matrix, which is what a photograph is. That's the incredible thing about the photograph. You can make a million of them and nothing changes to the negative, unless your light bulb is bad. And now with scanning, it really doesn't matter. But because of the market, the buyers and the sellers want us to make a small number of pictures so that they know that only six or 10 or something like this exist. So what they own becomes exclusive. Because have you walked on Andrashi Lutza in the last few days? It's a very exclusive looking street because everything looks so fancy and beautiful and it makes you want it. So I'm being facetious and ironic, ironic, but it's true. We have to be aware of the market. We talked about this earlier in our audience. We have to know that maybe I can't make 25 of this, or I can't say I sell it to anybody. Because if you're going to sell it to every, everybody, or hope that you're going to sell it to everybody, you're going to get much less money. <coughs> and it's going to be much more difficult to get people to buy it. They want to know that the one that's one meter square costs so many euros, and the one that's 50 centimeters square costs less euros, and that you only have maybe five of the meter and 10 of the half meter, and the one that's two meters, there's only three. Very exclusive. I'm joking a little, but it's, it's true. 
The other thing about this, which is a, a separate um, point, is that we need to let go of the idea that everybody's going to want to buy every single photograph for the rest of our lives. It would be beautiful if everybody wanted to buy everything, right? And you could sell 500 of this and 20 of that and 800 of this. The reality is it would be fantastic to sell an, an entire edition. And there will be other things that we will make and other ideas that will come to us. And people will want new things. And if they don't like, so here, there's chairs, right? I have 51 chairs. Now, if they buy all of this one, well, there's 50 left. If they can't make a decision, they have problems. It's not a big deal. So we need to know that it's OK to not worry about this, that there will be other opportunities that will come along, and there will be other things that people will be interested in. And when you sell something out, it makes you much more important and valuable. Oh, that's not available. Oh, there's only two left. Ooh, I better get it soon. So you can use this to your advantage. Keep smiling. Put your name and contact information on everything. My stupid little handouts, which you will get later, my address is on there, my email address, and my name. You do this too. When you're giving out a promotional stuff, you put it everywhere. OK. So let's talk about cards and mailers. They show off your best work. So you make a series of pineapples. And you have 15 pictures. Maybe you only put three or four pictures on the card, but they're your best ones. When you go to your critique group, and you talk to your peers, and you meet with reviewers, and you hear from people, you hear, that one's great. That one's not so good. That one's amazing. And then you use this as your information to help you to make a decision of what to put onto your promotional materials. Make it simple, make it direct, and make it tangible. And tangible is not just that um, they can relate to it, but also that it's physical. I was listening to something last week. It was online by somebody I know in New York. No, she, or she's in New York and in the Southwest, Arizona, I think. And she was talking about all the email that everybody gets. How many of you only get five emails a day? I sometimes get, if I get 10, <laughs> that's incredible. That means there's a problem in the world, right? I get a bunch of stuff. And it's not always from people like yourselves. I just get stuff. So, and this woman's point was that the people who are the decision makers, the gallery owners, the curators, the collectors, the museum directors, they could get 100 emails a day. We're lucky if they even look at it. Send them something. Because it lands on their desk. And they have to look at it. They get mail. Although, I know people who say, I know it's here somewhere. I got so much. And it was for her, it was some chocolate. So hopefully she found it before the mice did. But send them something. And I've gone into people's offices or galleries, and I've seen my stuff just sitting on their desk. So I know it matters. And they don't do that because they like me. They do it because they like the picture. So make it real. Again, provide your contact and your website information. How many people here have a website? Okay. How many of you are working on a website? Good. <laughs> website, 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 website. It's really important. Or some way that people can see even five pictures from you. It's really important. You can include on your card or your mailer, and I will show you some examples, a statement, your bio, your CV, or a review. This is just text. So if you have something this big, that's a lot of room. In English, we say it's a lot of real estate. There's a lot of places for you to put stuff. This was very specific, so I did not do that. But you can easily have you know, something here or something wherever. And I will show you examples. These are extremely affordable. So I had 2,000 of these made for $125. Two big boxes. And if I wanted 2,500, it would maybe be $150, not so much more. You know, the, it gets cheaper as you make more. 
<laughs> so while if I made only 100, it might cost me $65 or I don't know, whatever. But they're very cheap. When you finally make a design, and you should show it to people, you should ask for their comments. Tell me what's wrong with this. Tell me what's right with this. Did I misspell something? Did I miss something? Should I put something else on it? Ask your friends, ask your peers. Then make sure it's really, really good, and then get 500. Or, you know, start with 100, see what that's like. And then give them out. Give them out to everybody. Okay. And keep your concepts for design clean and consistent. Make it really nice. Make it simple, direct. And again, like if you're doing something that's really kind of crazy, you can add the craziness to it in a way that works. But make sure that that's informing and supplementing the quality of your, of your own work. <clears throat> okay. So, you can use CDs, zip drives, Dropbox. They're impressive, they're simple, they're affordable. They could showcase images in a series. So it's an easy way to put things together, right? You could use it like a, as a, you can add a, in these <coughs> devices, you can put your website, you know, you can make a PDF. You can do something that's very simple and organized. Include your support materials and your documentation. If you have installation photographs from an exhibition, or even if you did something in school and they give you a small room and you can make something, looks really good, why not? Then you're showing people that you're thinking about how you want your work to look. Again, statement, CV, bio, review, press, all that stuff. You can include audio or video, interviews, things you have. You know, you have on this 800 megabytes of space. That's a lot, a lot of real estate, right? And on these little sticks, you can have even more. So you can put a lot of stuff in there. And now you can make things very small in size. So, you know, you can pack a lot of stuff in there and allow people to choose and to have a selection of things about yourself. Put your name and contact on everything. <laughs> I will say that over and over and over. Okay. Zines. Talk about this a little bit. They can be very impressive, simple, affordable, and again, tactile. You know, it's, it's, it's something. And it's, for me, it's really fun to get something like this. Because then it's, it's cool stuff. And it shows me that you're thinking about how you want to put things together. You're making a story. You can showcase your work in new ways. It is less formal by design. Again, it was originally a very much a tool for anarchist sort of expression. Um, now it's become more like zine or magazine. It's artist book, things like this. It's all kind of interchangeable but it does not have to be a beautiful catalog. Text can be optional. Sometimes people don't say much. Or maybe on the last page you have some statement or something like that. It's really up to you. And allows you to test ideas and concepts. Because um, if you put something together and you hand it out to people, you can see how they respond. Maybe they hate your pineapple pictures. But when you send them one for bananas and three limes or you know, two tangerines or an apple or something, maybe they say, oh, I really like when you had a lot of different stuff. And then you get more response. It can become a series of collectible objects. Because I know some people in New York who are making multiple zines over time. And they hand them out to people or they sell them at book fairs for two or three or four or five dollars maybe $10 if it's a really cool one. And they're testing things and they're meeting people. And then somebody says, oh, I own every one of your zines. That's cool. And I can't wait to get the next one. So you're starting to create a market. And it's a great way to build interest in you to make a book if you want to make a book. I even know somebody who made three small books 
and then he built a box, so you buy each one separately, and then it comes, or you can buy the set as a, as a collector's edition with a really nice box. So it becomes, again, an object. We are the makers of objects. That's what a photograph is. So why can't we have an object as a promotional tool? And put your name on everything. OK. Questions, comments? Do you have anything to say? I just need another drink of water. OK. So let's take a minute to talk about your work. So the most important thing that we can do is make good work. If you are really, really organized and have beautiful marketing materials, but your work is really uninteresting, you might become really famous, actually, because there's enough bad work everywhere, right? But really, you should not. <laughs> We have enough mediocrity in the world already. So for those of you who met with me, I think you probably have an idea about this already. Know what you're doing. And this is so important for me because I see an integrated circuit or system between you and your identity and your work and your methods for sending it out there and for making it and for thinking. So, like, you know this man, Arion, who has this, I, I'm terrible with names, so Arion, who has this exhibition at Fao Sophia right now. So he has one series of his, him and his wife, and they're starting to make a family, and his text, and it has a conceptual quality. And if you look at everything else on his website, there's a conceptual quality, and a thread, we say in English, that makes its way through everything. So it may not mean that you say, oh, of course he's making these pictures now. But I mean that there's a, there's a way in which he relates to everything. And many artists have, the ones who I think are most successful, they have this relationship where they know that what they're doing and they can make connections between one series and another and themselves. But know your predecessors and your influences. And I'm going to say, build on history, don't bore us. And I say us as in the audience, the reviewers, the decision makers. I want to know something. Of, you're all, or most of you, are from Hungary. So if you're going to make work that has to do with identity or history or place, environment, experience, things like this, <coughs> consider how that relates to the current time in your country because it's a pretty complicated without getting into it for fear of listening ears. But don't make something that's just boring. I don't need to see a picture of the chain bridge and the castle and the Danube. I want to see something that's, you know, we laugh, but I want to see something interesting. Or maybe I want to see you <coughs> contemplating some sort of end of life experience relating to these places. Because I know for, to be a young person, not just in your country, but to be a young person in the United States also is a really complicated thing now, very different than when I was your age. When I was your age. Um, and there's a lot of work being made now that's addressing this angst, this struggle, and this insecurity about the future. And some of it is really, really amazing work. So let this be part of what you do if that's of interest to you. At least let it inform the work you're making. Break the rules. Rules are always given and they always should be challenged. And have something to say and make it relevant. It's kind of the same as know what you're doing. You know, these are all kind of <coughs> But I want to hear something interesting. And again, I want you to know why you're photographing pineapples, or bananas, or a landscape, or a chain bridge, or whatever. I don't want to hear, hmm, 
I don't know. I just like it. And I had a professor, this man, Di Carava. He was very important to me in graduate school. He always said, good enough isn't. Push yourselves. Push ourselves. Challenge ourselves to get to the next level. Really, it's, um, we say in English, it's incumbent. It's, in, it's, it's so important. It's, it is your responsibility to push. Because I will do that when I meet with you or talk with you or email with you or whatever. But it's important for me to see that if we're having a conversation over time or if I come back next year and I see your work again or whatever, that you're not just sitting around, that you're pushing. You don't just say, okay, that's all. Or uh, because Patendi did it, then I can do it. No, Patendi did it, then I want you to push past Patendi. Also, don't show a mix of disconnected ideas. So this is kind of a general discussion about your pictures. I met many people at the reviews who only had four or five pictures from a series. To me, this is just the beginning. And they're saying, it's done. Six pineapples. <laughs> well, wait a second. Have you even started to cut the pineapple open? or smash it against the wall, or whatever. So really, think about making a series. In the, in the US, a series is minimum 20 pictures. And that's 20 good ones after you made 100, where you throw out four for every one that you keep. So that's why I say, don't say it with three or six images. And it sounds <coughs> irreverent, but make us give a shit. We say this in English. Do you give a shit? I don't give a shit. Most people say they don't give a shit. But I'm, I use this strong language because I could use stronger. But I want to emphasize that I really want you to make me care. Because if you don't say to me and, or express to me that this is really important, am I going to care? I had an argument with one man who kept trying to convince me that his pictures were good. And I kept trying to say, I'm not telling you you're wrong, I'm not saying it's bad, but this is not expressing anything to me. And he kept saying, yes, I know, but look at this. I want someone to be able to listen and also to show me that they care, both in responding to the critique as well as that they're thinking about pushing their work further. Because as much as it may be difficult, and I'm aware that this is a very emotionally personal, sensitive world within which we work, to be an artist is to be sensitive, thoughtful, um, you know, considerate, emotional, all these things. Because we're coming from here, and here, and here, to put something out in the world. It hurts. If I show something to my wife and I say, wow, I'm so excited about this, she says, and then she goes back to her blackberry, that hurts. And so it's important that we think about how we reach people, but that we know that this is sensitive and that we still go forward. Okay, the first um, scenario I'm going to talk about, now that we have all this background, right? is to talk about portfolio reviews, which some of you already did last week. So why do we go to reviews? We sort of talked about this, right? It's opportunity, it's feedback, it's introductions. It's very affordable. Even for me, when it cost me $1,000 for four days to meet at least five people a day, that's 20 people for $1,000. That's not so expensive, actually, considering it's a face-to-face -face meeting for 20 minutes. Possibly we sit later in the bar or the, or the cafe at breakfast or whatever. And maybe they say, ah, come, I want you to meet this person. Or after we meet, make time to go talk to that person. So I never just have five reviews per day. I'm working like crazy because this is the most super important time that you make for your career at these meetings. So it's very affordable 
and you get direct access to these decision makers. That's what I'm talking about. The gallerists, the curators, writers sometimes, collectors, all that stuff. So I know people and myself, we don't sleep very well. We're constantly thinking and interacting and it's very intense. And we're talking to people all the time. And you're meeting other artists. And as I said before, they are the next generation. You are. You are, not me. I am now not a decision maker so much, but I can be. I curate sometimes. I introduce people. I love to do this. You are the next generation of decision makers. So I spoke to somebody. He works for a stock site. So you, right? Yeah. So get to know Mate. Everybody should take him out for a beer. And in the morning for a coffee, because he will need it after 47 beers. But I'm serious, because he, may work, he works for a stock agency now. Maybe if you make pictures like that, you want to talk to him. But don't just say, hey, Mate, I heard Salsa that made you embarrassed, and blah, 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 and come out here. Um, you know, don't do that. Make it genuine. Because Mate is actually making very interesting work that's completely antithesis of stock. So there's integrity to what he's doing, in a way he's sort of like, pushing things in a way that's very nice. But he may have ideas about your work also, and you may have ideas about his. Okay. So, give your pictures, your images. So, okay, we, how many of you have been to a review before? Okay. And how many people know what it is no matter what? If you've been or not been, you know what a review is. Yes? Okay. So I see some, how many of you have no idea? Don't be embarrassed. Everybody knows? Okay, great. So you know it's this very intense interaction. So when you're meeting with people, you don't always have a lot of time. And I know from, I had meetings, they came in and they rang a bell or something, and it was time to go. And sometimes, well, in the United States, I didn't see it here so much, if this is the table, and, and I'm next, I got my case, and I'm like right here when the bell rings. And my attitude is, get out of here, it's my turn. I'm respectful, of course, but I'm thinking it's about my turn. And there's the people who are sitting, they're packing everything up, and they're thinking, okay, there's somebody there. And if there's not somebody there, they can keep talking, but you're aware that it's time to pack up. You're not being rude or obnoxious, but I paid good money, and they paid good money, and it's a respectful um, interaction, and you stand there, and then they know, okay, and this person, the meter, you know, reviewer, is ready, and they're looking and making sure, and then it's time to move on. So, give your work a strong, clean, and consistent edit. Because that time, that 20 minutes, you're making an impression, and you want to make the best impression that you can. <clears throat> if you're making silver prints, black and white or color, you want them to be clean and spotted. You want them to look really good. If you're making stuff that you want to look crappy, because that's part of your aesthetic, then by all means, let it look crappy. But if you didn't have time to spot it, don't just say, oh, I don't care. Be aware that you might get a strong critique because you weren't prepared. And some people are not so good at spotting. You might need to get a friend to do it, buy them you know, a dinner, or cook, cook a dinner for them, right? And have them. If you're making inkjet prints, make sure those are also clean, your monitor's calibrated, you know, that you're making really, you're making prints that are supposed to be exhibition quality. Because even if it's smaller than what you show for a real exhibition, you want to impress the people that you meet that they know that this person is ex really knows what they're doing. And if I say, I need an exhibition in six weeks, I know the picture's going to be good. This is your, possibly your only chance. Don't put mat board um, interleaving, which is like paper or this glassine or something like this, or plastic, in between your pictures. Don't put, <coughs> try not to put them in these pages, because it makes it difficult to look at them 
there's a reflection or to move them or they get heavy, especially like with mats. Just your pictures. So these are exhibition quality, but they're gonna get destroyed. So I have one box and all my pictures go into that. <clears throat> And over time, they just get moved and moved and moved back and forth, and I've shown them to hundreds of people. It's my sacrifice. It doesn't come out of my edition because it's a photograph. You can make more. So I know when I make one, I make one for the box, and then I make one for my archive, so to speak, because it's really nice when they say, oh, I'd like to buy that. It doesn't take me six months to get to it. And I say, oh, no problem. I'll send it when I get home. can think about a consistent size and a consistent orientation so that when you are presenting work that all of these happen one time and then these come along. Don't say this, then this, then this, then this. That makes everybody crazy and it's very slow for you because you're turning things. So organize your work by orientation and if you keep it the same size then it re looks really cool, looks really slick and very impressive. Very, very good. And I say, because often, and especially at the Foto Porta, there was no time from one meeting to the next. And sometimes you're not going to the next table, you're going all the way over there. In the US, because it's not one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, sometimes you have one at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., then two, but then maybe two, 2.20, 2.40, and three o'clock. So the first ones, it doesn't matter if your work gets a little bit disorganized, but um, in the afternoon, it would really matter. So I say, and I think this is a very good exercise in general, to edit so that your pictures read well forward and backwards. So the story does not matter. I mean, the story is not compromised by the way the pictures move or the way you move the pictures. And this is great because then you're done. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm here, boom, I put my stuff out, and immediately I'm ready. That's a lot better than, you know, I gotta put this back together, oh my goodness, and then I come over here, or I come over here and I open it up and say, just a minute, I need to organize this. They're not gonna hate us, or hate you if you do this, but it looks, you can see the difference. It looks more confusing, you look more disoriented, it's not as positive an impression. And it's also a really good exercise for all of us as artists to think about how things work backwards and forwards. And actually something I do just for whatever is I often look at books backwards first. Because I just sort of like to see how does it go this way before I say this way. Because I want to get an understanding about the pictures. And put it in a nice, attractive, clean container. I don't think I saw anything where they came through and they said, oh, my God, I got all my papers. All my, these are my photographs. Just a minute. Things were pretty nice. But um, it's really important to have a nice container. And the, yeah. OK. So any questions? OK. So during the meetings, this is very important. Again, this is your 20 minutes. Turn off your devices. Oops, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> pay attention. You paid money. If it's 6,000 foreign or it's $1,000, it doesn't matter. You're paying good money for this meeting, this opportunity. You want to t make the most of it. Pay attention. Take your time. Sell yourself gracefully. Which means, because that's what this is. You're not there. Hi, my name's Saul. I hope you like my pictures. I'm serious. Some people do this. And you know, I can work with that, because it's going to be very difficult if it's your first time. But ideally, it's going to be, hello, really good impression, blah, 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 blah. And let's, let's dance. Don't talk too much. And try not to make excuses. So if somebody says, why did you do that? And you sit there, I don't know. That's not very good. 
And this can happen. And people will ask us questions. So you might think I seem like I am really have my act together, I'm really organized. But people sometimes ask me questions that I can't answer. And the best thing at least to say, oh, that's a really good question. I'll get back to you as, you know, soon. I really like that question. Thank you. That's very helpful. I'm not sure. I need to think about this. Lead and leave meetings gracefully. This is your time. They are the decision, they are the authority, right? All this kind of stuff. The decision maker. But you can step in and you can take control of the meeting. Take notes or record. And a couple people recorded when they met with me. But ask permission if you're going to record. I will give you later um, what I call a note taking sheet. This isn't one example, there's many. Um, actually, there's two. And it's just a way for you to take keep track of things. What you showed them, who they are, did you get a business card from them, um, you know, did they make recommendations, did they say what they liked, did they say what they didn't like, did they ask for something, did you give them something, did they introduce you to somebody, did they say follow up this way. I love it, I want 17 of those pictures in six months because I'm going to have an exhibition or thank you, keep in touch. What did they do? You know? What else do you want to say? I even have for me what I'm going to say in my follow-up. Because if I can make notes immediately after the meeting, I want to be very fresh and say, oh, she asked me some things that were great. She said, why are you taking pictures of chairs when, you know, you should be, you know, maybe you should be thinking about couches or something, whatever, right? And I think, wow, that's a really good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Thank you so much. And then I'm going to write that down because when I follow up, I'm going to say, Thank you for that question. I've thought about this a lot, and this is my answer. So these kinds of things you know, are really, really important, the note taker. Remember what they like and what they don't like. That's so important, because if I show her pineapples, and the only one she does not like is, you know, or if she doesn't like only one of them, that I'm not going to include that in my follow-up. I'm going to say, maybe even I'll say thank you, that was a really good critique. I've decided not to include that and I'm making other ones like this. What do they suggest? Stop with the pineapples, I want to see bananas, or you know, have you thought strawberries, or have you moved to vegetables, or maybe an eggplant, whatever. Whatever they're making suggestions, these can be very valuable. And sometimes their suggestions come from the fact that they're thinking about something in the future or some of their friends, you never know. And what do they want next? Do they want a package? Do they want a CD? Do they just want an email? Do they seem like they don't care at all? I'm serious, sometimes they don't. I've met people that they just, I felt like I wasted my time. It's okay. It's, it's the chance that we take, the risk that we take when we do this work, the marketing and, and media. But what do they want? This is so important. Because if they ask you for something and you completely forget about it, that's maybe the end of your chance with them. You know, especially if it's related to an introduction or an exhibition opportunity. And ask for referrals and introductions. I always ask every single person I meet, who else in this room should I be talking to? And then even if I don't have an appointment with that person, <coughs> I will go up to him or her later and I say, excuse me, can I have a minute of your time? So and so over there said, <coughs> I should introduce myself and show you my work. Do you have a moment today or tomorrow or something? And see what happens. Because if you come to me and you say, Pretendi Peter said, I must say, I know Pretendi, he's my friend. If he thinks, then I should. This is really, really important. The other thing I didn't mention, do a moment. Ask your friends and the other people at the reviews, who did they meet with? Who's good? Who's bad? And in the US, there was one place I went, and a friend and I got a notebook and we said, here, on this table, write your critique of all these reviewers. Because I wanted to know that person was an asshole. 
That's, or I wanted to say that person was an asshole. And there was one person that one year who was really difficult, very harsh, very critical, <coughs> extremely just mean and judgmental. I wanted everybody to know if you're going to meet with XYZ, this is what to expect because then it's great. You're helping each other. Just as much, you might say, oh, show it to this person because they love fruit. And this woman, she's making fruit pictures. She's going to look through there maybe, and hopefully she hears about this and makes a moment. Hi, I'm making fruit pictures. So this kind of thing is actually, for me, just as important as anything else because it's about the authority that we have as artists to own our efforts and to influence each other and to make sure that this is a good meeting for all of us. And then later we can say to the, to the panel or the host, whoever, you know, the photo porta people, you say, that one person was terrible. You should not invite that person back. They were not helpful at all. And they say there's strength in numbers. It's really, really good. Okay, what else? Always consider what they have to say and be open to their critique. Because if I'm telling you something, I'm not just saying this to be obnoxious. Most people are not saying it to be obnoxious. We're saying it to help you to make better art. We're saying it to help you to express yourself better, more clearly, more succinctly, we say, which is more precisely, and more powerfully. It's really, really important. And always make it easy to be liked. Because you're a representative. So if I come to the photo porta and I have four meetings with people that are just horrible because of the way they treat me, then I'm going to think twice before coming back. Because maybe I get an invitation to go to Bratislava or maybe I'm going to teach a class for 10 weeks in New York City. And I'm going to make a decision about, well, do I want to travel or do I want to work in New York and be with my wife and be with my work, you know? It's because it's a give and take for what these people do. They're really busy. And they do this because they want to see work. But you want to be an ambassador for everybody. It's really important. And if they like you, that's better. I have so many friends who own galleries in New York. And somebody shows me work and I can say, oh, I could introduce this to Joe or Tom or Fred or Michael or Sally or Louise or whatever, because they're going to listen to me. So you have a, a responsibility to be nice to your own work and your career, but also the possibility that over time these people are going to say, wow, I really like what Saul had to say and what he did, and he sent me somebody. Or this woman from La Repubblica who just published my work. I said, oh, I'm in Budapest. Budapest. I'm coming to be at this portfolio review. She said, oh, I go to Arl all the time. If you see anything good, let me know. I suddenly have an incredible opportunity to introduce good work to somebody. And if you haven't seen La Repubblica, it's really nice. Like, I was blown away, we say in English. It's like Vogue or something. So I thought, I said this to some friends. I was impressed my work's going to be in there. It looks really great. So even I have my own insecurities about my pictures. So you never know, though. We start to meet more and more people. And we have these opportunities to make introductions, which for me is, is a beautiful possibility. Don't be defensive. Don't be pushy. Don't be rude. And I could say don't, don't let your insecurity get the best of you. Um, because again, this is about our personality. I'm showing you my heart and soul on a table, and for all I know, you're going to take a big knife and just <laughs> and say, fuck you, pal. I hate this shit. You are stupid. And I have to know, well, yeah, that's the first person this week who said that, but everybody else said, that's really interesting. So then I have to know, okay, that's an opinion, and keep going. So we have to be careful. We shouldn't be defensive and pushy and rude, and we should not take what they say in a way that destroys us. Be as personable as possible. Be yourself. Because you never know when they're going to say, wow, that was really nice. I like talking to you. Let's have a drink later. 
or we see each other at the party. At Photoporta, there was a party on Saturday evening. They announced the winners. There was music. There was some food and wine. So you can end up talking to people. These people are our friends. They seem so important way up there. They make decisions, you know, but they can be your friends. Exchange contact information always, always, always. You are not there just to show your pictures and get opinions. You're there to network, to market yourself, to meet people, to exchange ideas, all these things. And you're also there to look at, ideally, to look at the work of your peers. So the reviews I've gone to, there's as much happening outside the room as there is inside the room. It's more difficult here at Photoporta because you're meeting, 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 meeting. And in the US, we always have a break, at least the things I've been to. So I can stop, get a drink of water. I can put things back together and I can say, hey, I saw your picture over in the corner. Let's talk. I want to see your pictures. And I'd love, or I want to show you mine, or, or we always do this exchange, boom, 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 boom. And it's great because you meet all these people. And you make friends, you add email addresses to your list, and you never know what could happen. And of course, leave something behind. Because everybody likes a gift. And don't obsess. <coughs> Practice makes perfect. If you screw up the first photo porta, or you felt mm, it was hard, I don't know if it was so good, that's OK. Think about it. How can you improve upon this? Because it's very demanding. And if you never did something the first time, it's going to be a challenge. Because the first time you rode your bicycle, if you fell, did you stop? No, you had somebody there to help you get back up. Let's go, try again. You have to do this, you know, this is the challenge. Okay. I think, let's see. Let's take a 10 minute break, 15 minute break. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Thank you.